Okay, so in this video, we're going to be working with entities. I wanted to bring entities up. So uh, those of you, you have an establishment, you want to be able to take orders or whatever, you're looking at this and saying, oh man, it's way too complex. I have way too many things. It's not going to be easy for me to do this. Um, it actually is. And one of the ways that you can do that is to use entities. Now, with Chris AI and with all of the interfaces that I've developed, I really don't have a need for it unless I'm you know, if I want it to know about animals and I want to categorize animals like all the mammals and all the reptiles and all the birds and I want to be able to draw paths or draw connections between those things, um, then I could do that. So what I've done here is I've created a couple of entities and pizza sizes have nothing to do with Chris AI, but I wanted to give this example to stimulate your thought process a little bit. Uh, the pizza sizes entity that I created is for what size pizzas somebody is going to order if you have a pizza establishment. Okay, and I've only created three sizes here. You would create entities for every product category. Okay, so on salads, you would have large salad, small salad, child size salad, whatever your sizes are, and then whatever the salad toppings are. Um, and then whatever the salad dressings are would be its own entities. So here we have pizza sizes. Okay, and if we go back into our entities here, we can see we also have pizza toppings. Okay, and I might want to, if I own a pizza place, I might want to create an entity called breadsticks. And I'll have a small breadstick and I will have a large breadsticks we'll just create two and we're going to click save okay so now that we have our entities created we're going to want to go ahead and we're going to create an intent for those entities okay um, I've already created an intent here called small pizza. Uh, it would probably be better if I renamed it and shortened it to pizza because there are a lot of ways you can do this. Okay. And giving this example is, um, probably not the best way to do it because you want to really think about how you're going to incorporate it into your interface. Okay. Are you going to want it to send a text message to your computer at the front desk in your restaurant saying you have a, an order from your chat interface? Or are you going to want it to tie into your system? Uh, chances are you're going to want it to tie into your system directly. And that's where the inputs and outputs and all of that stuff comes in real handy. Um, and that's where entities come in real handy because when it comes to communicating with your system, it's a text input. Okay, that's what it is. A large pizza, you connect that with a large pizza. A large pizza with pepperoni, you connect it with a large pizza with pepperoni in your order mechanism, whatever your order mechanism is. And I don't work in the restaurant business, so I don't know the terminology for all of these things. Okay, so I'm just giving you an example of the way that you could start programming something like this. And on the back end, you're going to want to connect it to your interface, okay, whatever your order mechanism is, which will be very easy to do because everything is text-based. And that is what I keep trying to get across to people is the importance of developing a language infrastructure now because the language is going to drive everything in the future. Okay, the language, pizza toppings, the language here is going to tell your computer what pizza toppings they want so that your computer can pass that information along to the cooks. And with the integrations that you have with Twilio and things like that, you can do it over the phone. Um, you can have it connected to an order screen, you know, through a phone integration, text messaging, however you wanted to do it. I mean, I'm sure there are a million different ways you could go about implementing it, but the key to implementing it is having the language, is being able to communicate with the interface. And the way you do that is with text. It's so easy. <laughs> I mean, it really is. <clears throat> okay, so what I've done is I've created a couple of different examples here. Okay, I want a large pizza with pepperoni 
give me a medium pizza, I would like a large pizza or small pizza all by itself. Okay, and the reason why I've done that is because this pizza category is going to actually be our order fulfillment intent. And the way we're going to get away with this is I want breadsticks. I want large breadsticks. Okay, so if you'll notice, the large breadsticks was automatically pulled out as an entity. And it's highlighted in purple, which means it's going to be able to distinguish between breadsticks, pizza toppings, and pizza sizes. Okay, so if I'm having an order interface program, then I want my user to be able to say, I want a large pizza with pepperoni um, with a large breadstick. Okay, and I want my interface to be able to repeat that. Okay, so you would like the first variable I want to include is breadsticks. The value is what we're looking for. Okay, you want breadsticks. You would like breadsticks. You would like breadsticks with pizza size with pizza toppings. Okay, so I wanted to give the breadsticks option by itself if somebody just wants to order breadsticks. I also wanted to give it the breadsticks, the pizza, the pizza toppings option. Because the pizza is going to go with the pizza toppings no matter what. You're going to have, whether it's cheese or whatever it is, you're still going to have the pizza toppings variable. You could also include a drink entity, um, a salad entity. So all of your product categories are going to be entities. Okay, so let's see how it works. I want large breadsticks. You would like large breadsticks. I want small breadsticks. You would like small breadsticks. I want a large pizza with pepperoni and small breadsticks. Now, I have a question whether this is going to work or not because I didn't include that. It worded that way, but we'll see. You would like a large pizza with pepperoni. So it didn't. So I would need to include this with all three highlighted in the phrase. So now it should work. I would like a small pizza with mushrooms and large breadsticks. You would like large breadsticks with a small pizza with mushrooms. And I would have to change that wording, obviously. Um, you would like large breadsticks and a small pizza. So I would put and. And I could also include an alternate variable with all three of these. Now, normally you wouldn't be able to put different topics like this inside of the same entity. But because all of our entities are highlighted and they're all separate, so my drink entity, my salad entity, all of those entities are going to be different. Okay, so I can draw all of those into an individual response down here, and I can word those responses differently. Okay, so instead of having 
just copy that the way it is. You would start like breadsticks. You would like the pizza size with the pizza toppings and breadsticks. And then you can get either one of those responses based on the input. So I want, I'll just type it in, I want a small pizza with mushrooms and large breadsticks. You would like a large breadsticks with small pizza with mushrooms. I didn't ever change that. So let's go ahead and include this again and see if we get the varied variable, the varied response. You would like a small pizza with mushrooms and large breadsticks. So now we have both response working, both responses working for all of the intents that we've created in our pizza category. So that's the way that you would use entities. Um, entities are very powerful, like I said, when you want to categorize and pull up individual aspects of individual things and associate things very quickly. Um, and that's what I'm saying. It's really not overwhelming. You're thinking, well, I have a pizza place. I have all of these different paths, all the different ways that a customer can order the product. Uh, but that's all taken care of very easily inside of the dialog flow interface uh, with entities. So hopefully this was helpful to you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.